Welcome to Grace Every Morning. I'm Pastor Ming Cham and I serve in Grace Discipleship Institute. The application question for Deuteronomy chapter 34 is, how will your life end? This chapter closes not just the book, but the life and ministry of Moses, the servant of God. There is a tinge of sadness and regret as Moses was given a final view of the promised land. But because of his rash disobedience, God disallowed him access. What an irony. He gave his life to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt and through the wilderness for 40 years with the expressed purpose of entering the promised land. This chapter ends with the sons of Israel poised to enter that promise, but without Moses, their esteemed leader. The key verse that I have chosen is verse 4. Let's read that together. Then the Lord said to Moses, This is the land I promised on earth to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob when I said, I will give it to your descendants. I have now allowed you to see it with your own eyes, but you will not enter the land. Moses was God's prophet without equal. God spoke to him face to face. God used him to, to perform all the mighty signs against Pharaoh. And even in his advanced age of 120, his vigor and eyesight were still strong. For all that he had going for him, he himself could not go into the promised land. Like Moses, every one of us is unique and hence irreplaceable. But that does not mean that any of us is indispensable. If Moses could not lead the people of God into their promised land, the Lord had Joshua waiting to take over that leadership. Years ago, when I was contemplating on whether to enroll into Bible school to be trained for full-time ministry, I was in two minds. Until I read of how Moses, that great servant and man of God, had disqualified himself, I realized then that the Lord was giving me the privilege of serving Him and inviting me to participate in the great adventure of ministry. And that if I were not keen, He had many others waiting in line to take my place. From that moment, I never took my calling for granted, but treasured it as a gift from God. I'm glad I answered the call. For only then could I have seen how God has led me uh, through these years, how He was faithful and how He has been faithful to me. When my life ends, and, and definitely it will, I want it to end without regret, knowing that I've obeyed my Lord as best as I could. So how will your life end? Fully experiencing the fulfillment of God's promise for your life, or only partially? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the calling, the unique calling that you have for each of us, your servants. Father, we thank you for it, that although uh, we will not be um, of the high esteem as Moses, your servant, whether for this generation or in this generation, nonetheless, we treasure that calling upon our lives. We do not take it for granted. We know that God, you have called us to participate with you in this great adventure of ministry. Help us, Lord God, not to think that we, we are indispensable in any way because there are many more that you can easily call. So we thank you for the time you have called us to and the task that you have called us to. And we pray that God, each day by day, that we will fulfill it to the best of our ability and capacity so that at the end of our life, we can say without regret, without a tinge of sadness, that God, all that you've given us to do, we have done and we will enter into that promised rest without reservation. For all these things, we pray and ask in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, before we res resume the, the devotionals on the Gospel of Mark, Grace Every Morning, from now on, will intersperse each series with the Psalms, five Psalms at a time. So we see you again on Monday, October 11th for the special devotional on Psalm 1. Until then, do make your life count for the Lord. The Lord bless you.